a warm and humid tropical climate with lush vegetation, a perfect breeding ground for insects. Whenever rice is stored, there's a constant threat of infestation from a variety of insect pests. The insects eat the rice, resulting in a physical weight loss. Also, their excreta, cast skins and dead bodies contaminate the rice. Any contamination with live or dead insects will lead to the rice being downgraded and possibly even refused by the consumer. As one of the aims of a national food grain agency is to improve the quality of rice reaching the consumer, the control of insect infestation is vitally important. Practicing good store hygiene will slow down the rate at which stocks become infested. But in a tropical climate, if rice is stored for more than three months, infestation by insects is to be expected. They may enter the store with the rice stocks, or fly, or walk into the store from outside. Insect infestation can be detected by spear sampling, or the use of special insect traps, known as bait bags. Additional inspection must be carried out regularly in the ears of the sacks and in any cracks and crevices in the store and in all store sweepings. Insecticides will only give short-term protection to the outer surface of the rice stack. Once infestation by insects is near or over 10 insects per kilogram, immediate treatment by fumigation is essential. Any delay in requesting fumigation will put the rice stock seriously at risk. Insect populations increase exponentially. This means that if no action is taken, their numbers increase more rapidly as time passes. The basic principle of fumigation is to cover the rice stack with a gas-tight plastic sheet. Seal the base with sand-filled tubes known as sand snakes. and then introduce a poisonous gas under the sheet for sufficient time to kill the insects. Great care is needed at every stage of the process to ensure success. Before fumigation is carried out, all store and stack surfaces must be thoroughly brushed and the floor swept clean. The sweepings must be collected in sacks and positioned close to the rice stack so they're included in the fumigation treatment. Otherwise they could be a source of future infestation. Methyl bromide or phosphine may be used for the fumigation. Both are poisonous and the necessary precautions must be enforced. Methyl bromide is normally used by private fumigation companies. It's a volatile liquid, usually supplied in cylinders. Methyl bromide is very poisonous, but it has no smell. Another substance called chloropecrin is sometimes added to it. Chloropecrin irritates the nose and eyes, and in this way acts as a warning agent if the gas leaks. The methyl bromide cylinder is placed on a weigh scale to check that the correct weight of gas is released. 
As it's a liquid, a network of pipes must be laid out to allow it to be distributed. The shape of the pipe network must be correct for the size and shape of the stack. The pipes are laid out so that the pressure at each outlet is approximately equal. A metal nozzle helps to vaporize the liquid. Underneath the nozzle, a few sacks are removed to make a well. Some old empty sacks should be placed around the side and at the bottom of the well to protect the rice stock from direct contact with the methyl bromide. Once the pipe network is in place, the stack is covered with the plastic sheeting. Don't allow the sheeting to come into direct contact with the methyl bromide as the liquid is very corrosive and the plastic will be quickly damaged. If a number of stacks are to be covered by a single large sheet, the excess should be taken up by doubling the plastic sheet. If it's necessary to join sheets together, a roll join must be made to make the enclosure gas tight. Any excess sheeting at the corner of the stack must be rolled and folded. The plastic sheeting must be checked for holes, as a completely gas-tight covering is essential. Any necessary repairs are made by gluing on a plastic patch. Don't use tape, as it may come off when the sheet is being handled. The edge of the sheet is carefully sealed with overlapping sand snakes. At this point, non-essential staff must leave the store. All but one set of doors are closed and locked. The gas cylinder is then connected to the pipe network. The dose is usually expressed as the number of grams of fumigant per cubic meter of stack volume. This must include all the area under the plastic sheet. Current national and international recommendations on dose rates and exposure periods must be consulted. For their own safety, those operating the cylinder valves must wear rubber gloves and a full gas respirator. All other personnel still present in the store must also wear gas respirators. Checks for leaks can be made with a halide lamp or similar gas detector. Once the correct weight of gas has been released, everyone must leave the store. Danger notices must be attached to all doors. No staff may enter the store until fumigation is complete. This normally takes two days. After fumigation, the rice stack must be aired. One edge of the sheet is lifted for about an hour. At this stage, gas masks must still be worn. When no gas can be detected with halide lamps, 
the plastic sheeting can be completely removed. The sheet must be handled and folded carefully to avoid tearing. After fumigation, poisonous bromide residues may be left in the rice. For this reason, no stock should ever be fumigated more than three times with methyl bromide. Commodities such as soya bean meal, which have a higher oil content than rice, will absorb much more methyl bromide. Therefore, with these commodities, there's more danger from poisonous residues and a higher initial dosage of the gas must be used. Fumigation with phosphine gas is more simple and less dangerous than with methyl bromide. However, it's more expensive. Phosphine gas is generated from tablets or sachets. These contain aluminium phosphide, which releases phosphine gas when it comes into contact with moisture in the air. The tablets and sachets must not come into contact with water. If they do, there's a serious danger of fire. Before fumigation is carried out, the stack must be brushed and the floor thoroughly swept. As with methyl bromide fumigation, all sacks of the sweepings must be placed close to the stack so that they are included in the fumigation. The plastic sheeting is then placed in position. Careful checks are made for holes. If any are found, they must be repaired. The edge of the sheeting is sealed with overlapping sand snakes. The stacks are now ready for fumigation. The bottles of tablets or tins of sachets must be carefully opened in a well-ventilated area. The dust and phosphine fumes must not be inhaled. The tablets are placed in a single layer on cardboard trays and then positioned either between the stacks or under the pallets. Sachets provided in strings of ten are hung on the sides of the stacks. Current national and international recommendations on dose rates and exposure periods must be consulted. Phosphine is not recommended for fumigating GABA, as it is highly absorbed onto the seed coat, making it difficult to achieve high enough concentrations of the gas to kill the insects. After the phosphine has been placed in position, the edges of the plastic sheeting must be carefully resealed. The store is then locked and danger notices positioned on every door. Fumigation with phosphine should last for a minimum of four days and preferably for five days or longer. After fumigation, one side of the plastic sheeting is lifted and the stack allowed to air for at least one hour. The plastic sheets are then removed and folded. The used tablets or sachets must be carefully disposed of so as to prevent contamination with the dust. The used aluminium phosphide must be mixed with water and detergent and then buried immediately.
Where the phosphine or methyl bromide has been used, it's important to check that the fumigation has been successful. From time to time, fumigation may fail because of a faulty technique. To date, in Indonesia, no fumigation is known to have failed due to insect resistance. So, if some insects survive fumigation, poor technique is probably to blame. During fumigation, the gas concentration can be monitored. Alternatively, samples of live insects, including all life stages, can be positioned in various parts of the snack before sheeting. After fumigation, the samples are retrieved and observed over a period of time for the development of living insects. Fumigation kills all insects that come into contact with the poisonous gas, even those hidden deep within the stack.